In today's video, we have the special privilege of sitting down with John Murray from Port Canaveral. Thank you so much for sitting down. I'm excited to chat with you a little bit further. We had the privilege privilege of sitting down and discussing the state of the port, which is absolutely fascinating. And we have the opportunity today to expand a little bit further and learn a little bit more from John himself. So thank you so much for taking a little time oh, out of your you. day. Thank you for, uh, for the invite. Well, I learned so much about the port here and so many exciting things to come here in the upcoming year. It's absolutely fascinating. What, one of the things that I really want to discuss is some of the en environmental concerns. I know from when you first started your position here a couple years ago, about three years ago now, mm -hmm. that was one of your major concerns and having a environmental focus. Can you discuss a little bit on that? Is that still one of your top priorities? Uh, absolutely. It's always a top priority and, and we have a very, very robust environmental program here at the port. You know, we live in an area which is on the coast of course and, and the sea is, is something that we we all cherish it's our business and, and uh, you know there's an interface between the sea and the land and we want to make sure that we protect the uh, the environment the, uh, the the water the uh, the animals that live in it we have a very active sea turtle uh, population in our port believe it or not if you go out to any one of the docks here you can see green turtles swimming around it's, it's <laughs> kind of cool and, and dolphins and, and all so you know we we really do want to uh, preserve that mm -hmm. and uh, there's, there's a lot of folks that think that the cruise ships come in and they're they're dirty and they, they pollute and and nothing could be further from the truth they are one of the most overregulated industries in the world and uh, you know anything from from trash on the ship everything is properly taken care of and, and uh, there are very very strong penalties for any operator that doesn't follow the rules so we we uh, take pride in, in the cruise operations here. And right, and with the new year coming January 1st, 2020, we have a big change with the LNG. And That's the a global change. Having a huge part in the responsibility in that. And walk us through what that, that looks like. Is it? Uh, it's, it's not the ports per se that have the responsibility, but the, the lines themselves, the cruise lines mm -hmm. and the uh, cargo carriers, tankers, cargo ships, container ships, everybody has to comply with new IMO regulations, International Maritime Organization, which is a, a uh, agency of the United Nations. And uh, all countries of the world have ratified this, this standard where there'll be less and less fuel uh, burn that has a sulfur component to it because mm -hmm. sulfur is the the noxious gas that that uh, affects the greenhouse gases and etc. So LNG when it burns it burns clean and there are no uh, uh, negative impacts to to uh, black oil. Long term even LNG has some it's the best fuel available today. Mm -hmm. If you look out 20 and 30 years at the requirements the IMO is setting forth into the future, even LNG won't meet that, that criteria. So there's a lot of experimenting now and, and analysis on, on hydrogen as a fuel. Yeah, and with so many uh, new cruise ships being built with LNG in mind, we're moving towards the right direction with moving, yeah. the, uh, a forward focus on the environment. And it's, it's wonderful exactly. to hear how it comes all together with the port and the cruise ships. And we, we at Port Canaveral, and I, and I, I mentioned uh, earlier that, that uh, it's a, uh, a journey that we started three years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been with the port for three and a half years. And, and uh, when I first, I, I came from the cargo side and the container shipping side. And uh, when I came to the port, uh, I had to learn about the cruise in industry. And I'm, I'm looking at all the ships that are under construction. They hadn't even been built yet that were going to operate with LNG. And I said, well, you know, that makes sense because I understood the whole fuel issue from, from my, uh, my days at the, with the container ships. And uh, I said, it makes sense for LNG. Mm -hmm. How do we get to be there first? We need to get out in front of it. We need to make ourselves available. When these ships are delivered, if ports aren't ready, then they're not going to get these new ships. We need to be ready to take as many that they want to throw at us. So I think that's where we're positioned ourselves very well right now for the future. And that uh, while we've got the Carnival Mardi Gras will be here next year as the first LNG power cruise right. ship, we've got two Disney ships close behind and we're talking to a few other operators that are thinking, hey, you guys can do LNG? And we say, yes, bring there them here. Go. They so, want to get on yeah, board as well. Exactly. So I'd love to hear a little bit further about some of the challenges uh, that this port face. Every port potentially faces this problem with limited space. You can only grow so much and you have to shift around. And I thought it was really unique how some unique problem solving with having some of the ports be uh, a duo of cargo and for the cruise lines. Can you expand a little bit on we, further on that? Yes, we've uh, been forced this year because we're building Cruise Terminal 3 for Carnival to accommodate the Mardi Gras, right. which is a big ship and wouldn't, wouldn't fit in any of their existing terminals. So we're building that, that new terminal for them. 
Uh, one of the challenges that, that you have is uh, balancing the requirements in the port. We have a mm -hmm. lot, of, lot of requirements that were unanticipated. Like I can look at a cruise terminal and say, okay, we got to build it, make it bigger for bigger ships, mm -hmm. bigger uh, throughput of, of cruise guests, whatever. And then with the Carnival uh, Cruise Terminal 3, mm -hmm. that was one of our terminals we used for port of calls. Port of calls do not have the same customs and border protection requirements. Right. So we were using that for our port of calls. When we took that terminal and demolished it and started the construction for the new terminal, that didn't slow down our business. So our cruise partners are still sending ships to Port Canaveral. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, 2015 was the last time we had six ships in a day. And then this year we looked and I think we had nine ships, six, six ships nine times during the year. Yeah, that's so incredibly say, busy for we, a port. How do we accommodate that? Yeah. So we uh, put our heads together and we worked not just with our cruise partners, but with all of our cargo partners. And we said, we, we need to use a cargo berth for 12 hours. We need to bring a port of call in. We need to you know, have buses staged, be able to move people in and out, and then we can go back to cargo activity. And like I say, it was a port-wide effort. And, mm -hmm. and our, our cargo- Teamwork for sure yeah, to make yeah. that happen. Our cargo customers were you know, upset, like, well, that's gonna, what's gonna happen to my operation? I said, well, here's the operation. We can tell you the nine days that are gonna be a problem mm -hmm. a year in advance. There you go. So let's work around that. And if you can delay or, or, or advance a, a departure and arrival, we can work that way. And I know from the cargo side that you can do that because very rarely <laughs> do the cargo ships show up on time. <laughs> so it's not like the cruise industry. Right. So we were able to work through it. And uh, it was a great partnership with everybody. And, uh, you know, I think uh, our partners that, that had to take the port of call at the cargo docks was, uh, I believe, NCL. And I think we also have done one for uh, one or two with Royal Caribbean. So uh, worked with them very closely to make sure that it, it went off without a hitch and uh, they've all been very pleased with the result. So speaking of partnerships, what about the community? I'd love to hear a little bit how the community gets involved with the job opportunities that the port brings to the community and the county in itself. It's uh, such, you know, such amazing growth and exponential with that growth mm -hmm. is that it means great things for the community like Jetty Park. What can we see? Are there just going to be additional activities with all of the construction, things like that? No, the, the biggest challenge with the with the community is we've got our boat ramps that, that are free boat ramps that, that are largely used by the Central Florida community and uh, they're the closest ramps to the Atlantic Ocean. So a lot of people, if they want to fish offshore, tend to use them. And you're a big and, fisherman yourself. Well, and, and when I when I can, I, you know, <laughs> I, I keep pretty busy. So with the cruise terminal three construction right adjacent to the boat ramps, it's caused some disruption with the community. We've tried to be very proactive and posting signs, posting uh, messages on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and our port website. Try to get out in front of the, don't let the problem happen. Get out in front of it and say, okay, this is Proactive. what we're doing this weekend. Mm -hmm. Here's the traffic flows, et cetera, so that we don't disrupt the community. And right. I'd say given the enormity of the project that we're doing, it's been very successful. We've had very, very few complaints. That's so and good to hear. And we've had uh, things like, uh, they have a red snapper season once a year in Florida for the last two years. and anybody that has a boat has to go red snapper fishing so there's more traffic than we could ever imagine and yeah. we set up a satellite lot and we shuttle people out so they could get their boat in the water bring your trailer out park it and uh, you know it's just the, the kinds of things you have to do we're a very unique port in that you know we have a very large community component most ports don't mm -hmm. and uh, it makes us you know have to think of the community anytime we do something and, and that's yeah. the right thing to do anyway for sure, definitely the right thing to do with the right in mind with the environment, the community and everything, all the different pieces involved. Uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Really love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. thrilled. Keep in mind, we're the easiest port to drive in and out of in, in the United States. <laughs> Keep that. <laughs> Wonderful. We're easy in, easy out. Yes, um, the second largest in the world. So. In the world? Amazing things to come and exciting things in the near future, in the very near future and in the year and so to come. So we're very excited and very pleased to hear your insights and share it. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, thank you. please do give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more if you haven't already. And until next time, ciao for now.